Um, our objects can also have names. So this is not true for just data frames. It's true for all our objects. Uh, and this can be very useful for writing readable code uh, and self-describing objects. So for example, I'm creating a vector that's uh, in, an integer sequence, one to three. And by default, there's no name. So when I call the names function on x, it gives me a null value. However, I can, I can give a name to each element of the vector x. So for example, if I, I can say the first element's called foo, the second element's called bar, and the third element's called north. So now when I print out my x vector, I get a vector one, two, three, but then each one has a name over it, which is the name I just specified. Um, and so when I call the names function, uh, I get the, the names that, that are associated with, e with each element of the vector, foo, bar, and north. Uh, lists can also have names. Um, and so, for example, here I'm creating a list with the list function, uh, where the first element is called A, the second element is called B, and the third element is called C. Um, and so when I print out the list, it prints out the names of each element and the values associated with those names. Uh, finally, matrices can have names. Uh, these are something, these are called dim names. Uh, so here I've created a matrix uh, from the sequence 1 to 4. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. And uh, so the, when, I, when I use the dim names function, uh, I pass it a list. I, excuse me, I assign, assign it a list where the first element of the list is the, is the vector of row names and the second element of the list is a vector of column names. So here I want to name the rows A and B and I want to name the columns C and D. So that's what I pass to the dim names function. And now when I print out my matrix, I can see that the row names and the column names are labeled as I wanted. 